watching as a coach or a fan? A little bit of both, and mostly a fan, but every once in a while the coach jumps out and yells or says something or gets a, a coaching point across to my wife or, <laughs> or my dog, so they don't listen as well. <laughs> <laughs> what are you seeing? I mean, if you're an analyst and they're saying, hey, what do you think of this Oregon team you're watching today? What, what are your thoughts? Very talented, very beat up. Um, struggling a little bit tonight and I, I think they played one complete game this year against Ohio State which we all saw uh, since then they haven't been on the same team I'm hoping that Thibodeau will come back in the second half and provide a spark for everybody uh, Anthony Brown has made some plays and he's missed some plays and that's probably gonna happen I, I believe the coaching staff thinks he gives them the best chance to win and I trust their judgment so um, Pac-12 conference, as we say every year, is a very difficult, much of like a cannibal conference that eats its own. Uh, I'm not sure because you can look at teams that will beat somebody and go lose to somebody else the next week. Oregon is the most talented team or was to begin the season. They have some injury issues right now that are making it more difficult. Uh, they've got to work on run fits. I've talked to them about that. The front seven, they have some youth there, they have some inexperience, they have some injuries. Uh, the secondary has bailed them out many times this year. Uh, offensively, Verdell going down is not a good thing. Uh, I'm waiting for some of those young receivers, the taller guys, to step up and make some plays. They made some catches tonight. Uh, they need to make more. They need to help Anthony Brown be more efficient as a quarterback. Um, and the offensive line is not doing as good a job tonight as I think they should. What do you miss about coaching and what do you not miss? I miss Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning. <laughs> Friday night, talking to the team, Saturday, the game, experience, environment, and Sunday morning, reading about our wins in the paper. I don't miss Monday through Thursday. <laughs> when, when you think about your career as a head coach here, what are the moments that instantly pop in your mind? There's not one. It, it's more probably people than, right. uh, you know, it's former players that are now coaching. I went over and talked to Bill Musgrave and Justin Wilcox and Peter Sermon and Jed Boyce and Steve Greatwood, who are all dressed in cow gear tonight. <laughs> and then, you know, uh, seeing uh, Nate Costa coaching now and watching what Chip and some of the people are doing at UCLA. And, uh, there, I talked to Chris Peterson the other night who coached for me and then just finished coaching for Cal, or excuse me, Washington. Uh, you know, it's the relationship. It's watching people grow, players, coaches, and being able to stay friends with them. I talked to Jeff Tedford the other day. He called me. I called him back. We talked for an hour. Chris Peterson, we talked for an hour. And you, you start going and you remember some old things. You talk about what's going on in college football now. I'm scared for college football. I'm scared to death because of the portal. The NIL, I just don't understand how it's going to work out for everybody. And I'm afraid for the game that I love and I coach and I spent my entire life doing. Uh, I think we need some central oversight from somebody, whether it's the federal governor or the NC2A, because leagues, uh, states basically cover it. And I'm not the biggest expert, but I just I know enough to be dangerous, and it scares the dog out. Do you have a relationship with Coach Cristobal and, and kind of what has that been to you? I do. Uh, you know, we usually talk once a week after a game and I sort of tell him what I think and he says, thank you. Coach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I, I've been involved with the team at times. I'm not, I don't live here in Eugene anymore, so I'm not around as much. I come to the games as often as I can. I'll go to the games on the road. Uh, I love the Ducks. I love what he's doing with recruiting. I love his coaching staff. Uh, I think this year has been difficult because they were by far the most talented team. They've had some serious group of injuries and difficult injuries uh, to more than one people in the same position sometimes, and that's hard to overcome. But uh, they've got to get going tonight uh, and I think get back on a, on a track where they feel comfortable and confident. Can you think of us, like in your career, a season maybe hit as hard by injuries as the one that you've seen here? Yes, 1991. I was the offensive coordinator, went through five quarterbacks. Uh, it's hot. <laughs> we were 3-0. and Dan O'Neill broke his thumb. Sean Salisbury went down. Kyle Croson went down. Doug Musgrave went down. I think Bob Brothers had to start the last game of the season. He had been a wide receiver the entire time. So injuries are something you can't control. It's very difficult. They affect not just you at the time, but everybody else. But, you know, the next man up theory is a very positive thing, and Mario's done a great job of recruiting one of the most talented groups, not just in this conference, but in the nation. And hopefully that 
youth, albeit unexperienced, will step up and find ways to make plays. For a coach who coached in an era where playing freshman was a little bit more taboo than today, this is a staff that's not afraid to play freshmen quickly, but when a fan base is clamoring for throw the freshmen all the time everywhere, they must be the answer to their four and five stars. As a coach who didn't always throw freshmen out there immediately, can you speak to those initial first few weeks of learning and development, even if they show up in the middle of the year, what goes into it? Freshmen could play at certain positions, even when I was coaching. DB, wide receiver, running back, we play freshmen. You don't play a freshman very often in the offensive line. You don't play him at quarterback very often. But kids today are much more farther along in terms of their training. They train, they have quarterback gurus, they have all these things they do. They come in early, so they've got a spring practice and sometimes a fall practice before their true freshman year. So I think it's a little bit different, and I wouldn't be afraid, but I truly trust that their decisions to who they play is based on what they see every day in practice and in the meetings. And a lot of times we come in, even me as a look at a you know, come in, I look at that, oh, how come that guy's not playing? Well, I wasn't there in practice. I, I wasn't there watching. I've never been able to talk to him in a, in a film setting or whatever to understand what they think and what they know. And this coaching staff is really good. Well, talk about just being honored tonight and what that means to you. This actually happened seven years ago, so it must have been COVID delayed or something. I, I, I'm not sure. No. It, it's you know, it's it's awesome. It's fun. I saw some people I haven't seen in a while. You know, to go back out on the field at Oxford and hear the crowd cheer is really nice. Glad they didn't boo me. So you know, uh, but it's no, it's just fun and it's it's neat. And you know, you hope that what you do will stand the test of time and that people might remember that we actually played some pretty good football at other times too and, and hopefully we can continue to do so. When, when you look back uh, at, at the career you had, you come back to these games, you see the HDC, the sold out crowds, the uniforms, I mean that is very much a legacy that you and Rich spearheaded and built here. I mean does that ever sink in when you come in and, and see these games now knowing that this is now a 25-year sustained effort of excellence at Oregon that was very much in part built by you? I think we all were a part of it, and, and we were in the right place at the right time. We had a great collection of players and coaches and supporters and administrators and support staff that bought into what we wanted to do and the vision of Oregon being not just a little football team here, but something that could command respect across the nation. And I think Mara's recruiting has taken that to another level and the facilities continue to improve and the people behind the scenes are doing all they can to make football successful. So I played a, a, a small part in this. I was fortunate to be in the right place at the right time, recruit great athletes, develop them, and watch them grow. And a lot of them are coaching today on the other team. I have Peter Sermon and Justin Wilcox and Bill Musgrave, I mean, that's three guys I coached, and two of them I recruited and signed. And uh, it's hard to see them in the wrong gear, the wrong colors, but uh, I, I, I look at them and I, I love them, I remember them, I hug them on the field today, and I said, hope you guys have a great game and come really close. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's it's awesome. I, I'm very appreciative. That when you get an honor like this or you're involved, it just reminds you of all the people that had to be in the right place at the right time to make it happen. And not as a head coach, you're very fortunate. You have the right kind of staff, the right kind of players. They buy in, they listen, and the right people support you. You can do wonderful things. And I always felt like by staying here at Oregon and what we accomplished counted for a little bit more. 